Oh God, we love you today, God. We honor your presence today. Father God, you said in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, God, there are pleasures forevermore. Father God, we are grateful to be able that, that you have chosen us to be watchers, to be intercessors, uh, to be prayer warriors, oh God. Oh God, we call all the prayer warriors. Uh, oh Father God, I hear you saying, I'm calling all my prayer warriors. Uh, I'm calling all, there's, a, there's, there's an APB out all oh, for all prayer warriors. It's an all points bulletin out for every prayer warrior. It's time to get up off of that lazy boy chair. It's time for us to get up off of our couches. It's time to us get up, get up, and begin to lift up our voices in prayer. Father God, I thank you, Lord God. I have I, when you told me to get get on my watch, I said yes, Lord. Oh God, I thank you for calling me. And I know somebody else and out there listening, praying today, God. I know they're saying, Lord God, I received the watch. I received my prayer assignment. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I believe in these last and evil days, for truly it is the last days. Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, I thank you. Oh God, in these last and evil days, God, you want us to be Paul Revere's. Oh, Paul Revere's in, in the time of old. All they said was that the, the, the British are coming. The British are coming. The British are coming. The British are coming. But God, there's a greater one coming besides the British. And you called us to be to be the be 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 the, the spiritual Paul Revere's of this age and times. And all we need to do is declare and decree in our prayers. Declare and decree wherever we go, in the barbershop, at the grocery store, at the gas pump, at the hospital, in the schools. We got to keep saying Jesus is coming. Father God, for you say that your time to come is soon. God, we got we to be watchers and declare and decree what thus saith the Lord. Father God, I thank you, Lord God. We pray today, Lord God, that everybody that's praying, Lord God, everyone all around us, God, will be quick to tell them that Jesus is coming. Father God, you said in the last days, perilous times will come, God, that there'll be all kinds of mayhem and commotions. In the last days, these are just the signs of the time. Every time we see a war, every time we see see some kind of battle. Father God it's already been predicted. Uh, Jesus you already predicted it. In Matthew 24 you told us oh God in the name of Jesus uh, that when you see wars and rumors of wars uh, and all kinds of kalahim uh, and all kinds of commotions, all kinds of distress and anguish all through the land you said don't worry about it. It's just the signs of the time. It's just God is saying I'm pointing to my arrival that Jesus will crack them skies. Father God I pray today Lord God that everywhere we go we will we will be the Paul Revere's and we'll tell the people that Jesus is coming. Yes, there are wars and rumors of wars. Oh, this is the signs of the time. You say, Lord God, men will, men will rise up against each, each other, oh God. You say, Lord God, even the weather will tell it. The weather. You said, Lord God, we won't be able to know the different seasons. Uh, there'll be different the seasons will begin to overlap. Uh, you wouldn't be able to tell the summer from the winter and the winter from the summer and the fall from the spring. Uh, has not this happened? Uh, oh God, we did the time to see the weather is not the same. Uh, that's because the earth realm uh, is birthing out the new the newness of Christ, the newness of the coming. Uh, the earth realm is declaring and decreeing. Uh, the earth realm, the, the earth itself uh, is trying to tell us that Jesus is coming back. Uh, and Father God, if Jesus is coming back. Uh, what kind of manner of man should I be? What manner of man should you be? What manner of man should the people we should be we should be asking God to get us together? Father God, I'm asking you now on the behalf of those that are watching, on behalf of our families, on the behalf of the church. God, we asking you to get us together, oh God. We asking you to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, if there's anything that we have done or said, God, that's hindering us. Uh, Father God, we're looking at our, our garments, uh, our garment's supposed to be white, God, but there are stains. There are stains in our garment. Uh, oh, God, you said you was coming back for a church uh, without spot or wrinkle. Father God, there's wrinkles in my garment. There's wrinkles in their garments. There's wrinkles in our garments, God. There's stains. Oh, God, because of the things that we have done, God, you said if my people who are called by my name, if they will just humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. You said my people, wicked ways. You wouldn't talk about another deity's people. You wouldn't talk about Harry Christian's people. You wouldn't talk about another God's people. Father God, you was talking about your own people. 
He said, if my people who are called by my name, if they will just humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then let us know that your people, us, the us's, oh yeah, oh yeah, the church, we got some wicked ways that we need to get right. So Christ, you said, if we would just turn from our wicked ways, we got to turn. We can't say we kick, we got to quit saying, God, I'm sorry. God, we call, we run back into sin. God, I'm sorry. God, you say it should be a turning away. The true biblical definition of repentance is turning from your sin in a 360 degree change. If we really repented, Father God, if I really repented of my sin, there should be some fruit. You said bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. If I repented of sin, you should start seeing some difference. I shouldn't keep on falling back in the same thing. Father God, I know we have some weaknesses. I know we got some struggles. But sooner or later, there should be a change. You say you should know them by their fruit. Uh, oh God, that's why we got this. We got to come out from among them and be separate. Father God, you said in your word, God, make a difference between the clean and the unclean. The righteous from the unrighteous. The dark from the light. There should be a marked difference, God. In the name of Jesus from the church and the world, God. So God, we ask you today, get us ready. Get us clean. So how can we preach the message that Jesus is coming and we got sin in our lives? So God, today, in 2016, we reach out, we stretch out our hands and say, Lord, take us. Lord, cleanse our heart. Lord, cleanse our mind. Lord, cleanse our innermost being. Oh God, create in us a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within us. Oh God, cast us not away from your presence and renew a right spirit within us, oh God. Oh God, cleanse us up, purge us, God. Purify our hearts, oh God. Get out of us the junk. Get out of us complacency. Get up out of us laziness and slothfulness in the spirit. Take it all out, God. We want to be clean. God, we want to be right. God, you got some people that you got some wannabes today. It's good to be a wannabe. <laughs> oh yeah, it's good to be a wannabe. You want to be right. We want to do right. We want to live right. We want to be examples in the name of Jesus. Father God, let not our lives cause somebody else to stumble. Let my not let not my life cause a sinner to stumble. I don't want to stand in the way of sinners. I don't want to block the sinners from Jesus. I don't want to mom. I want my life to block somebody from seeing Jesus. When they look at my life, I want them to see the Christ in me. The Christ in me, the hope of glory in the name of Jesus. Oh Oh God, we just thank you. Father God, I pray today that you will cause us to be discerning in these last days. For these are the last and evil days, God. These are the days of just like the day you say, Lord God, that the, that the coming of Jesus Christ will be just like the days of Noah. It's the same thing. You already you already predicted it, God. Jesus already preached it. He already declared it. He prophesied it. Noah is the same way. Everybody going about doing their same thing. They working and going back and forth, partying, having a good time, being that being their own God, doing what they want to do, how they want to do, with whom they want to do it with. Just doing all kinds of stuff. Just God is not even in the picture. We don't took God out of schools. We don't took God out of marriage. We don't took God out of everything. We don't take the sanctity of the church. Okay, then then then. then X God out. It's Xmas now. It's not even Christmas. Christmas. Christ at Mass. We call it Xmas. We keep taking Christ out. Every time we take Christ out of something, that thing goes down. We take Christ out of the schools, God. Then, then there's a there's a there's an epidemic of shooting in the schools. Could we keep taking you out? Keep taking you out the marriages. Now we got two men married and two women can marry. We keep taking you out of stuff. We take we take you out of the equation. The equation goes down. God, we gotta put you back in our schools. We gotta put you back in our marriages. We gotta put you back in our homes. Put you back. Put you back up. Uh, let it be a put back anointing. Uh, I stretch out my hands today, God, and I say, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, uh, I release a, a put back anointing. We're gonna put you back in our homes. We're gonna put you back in our schools. We're gonna put you back. God, we gotta we even gotta put you back in our churches. Some churches, God, you say we said we're two or three are uh, gathered together in my name. There I am in the midst, but sometimes some um, some places don't have your presence. God, if you're not there, we don't need to be there. We don't come to church for shenanigans. We don't come to church for entertainment. We're not coming to church to see our best friend. We're not coming to church to show off our new outfit. I'm not going to church show off my new weave i'm not going to church trying to get a man trying to get a man trying to get a woman i'm not trying to go to church to get get some prestige and get some get some accolades i'm not trying to come to church trying to get some human power father god you we keep taking you out of stuff we we'll take you out of churches oh god church is going down so god today i release my hands by the power of the holy ghost and we have a put back anointing i never heard it that way but there's a put back anointing we're gonna put you back you said seek ye first the kingdom of god 
and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. We seek you first. Uh, we're going to put you back in everything we do. God first. Uh, in the name of Jesus. We put you back, God. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, when we pray, that's, put, that's acknowledging you that you first. You say, trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding all your ways. Acknowledge God and he will direct your path. God, we're going to put you back on the first. We're going to put you back. We're going to quit putting you back on the back burner. We're going to put you first. Uh, first, determines the rest. Uh, whatever is put first, determines the rest, God. In the name of Jesus. So, Father God, I thank you and I praise you as you're doing a great and mighty thing. As we pray, God, you, you're getting us all together, God. And God, we put in, we, you are deputizing us today. You say, go ahead and tell them, yes, it's like the days of Noah. When the days of Noah, they were doing all kinds of stuff. Until that flood came, they laughed at Noah. They ridiculed Noah. They thought he was stupid, talking about you're going to make some some rain going to come. See, they have never saw rain, Father God. They never saw rain. But they're always going to rain. It's going to rain 40 days and 40. They laughed at him, call him a fool, call him an idiot. I bet they call him a holy roller in our terms. They talked about him, put him down, talking himself, stupid prophet, oh, you stupid. They laughed, but nobody was laughing when that rain started coming. When the rain started coming down, beating the, and people, the whole earth was destroyed. Everything was destroyed. Male, female, kids, boys, girls, all the tree, everything was destroyed. All, all the people, all the animals were destroyed. Nobody was laughing in. Are they laughing now, Father God? Are people laughing at us? Oh, we talking about Jesus coming, Jesus coming, get your life together. Oh, they might be laughing at us. But when you crack that sky, Jesus, nobody going to be laughing. Because, Father God, we all got to stand before you to see the deeds that are done in this body. Father God, I pray today that none of, none of us will be lost. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. <clears throat> that whosoever believes in him won't perish to have everlasting life. Father God, you said, Lord God, that you came for everybody. You want all to be saved, saved and none to fall none to go to hell. But we know somebody won't receive you, Lord. God, you gave man a free choice. Father God, you gave man a free choice to choose you, that choose you this day whom you will serve. You don't make nobody get saved. You don't make nobody pray. Make nobody go to church. Make no, you ain't, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't coerce folk. You want people to love you with a free heart. Choose you this day. We got the, we have free will. So God, that's why everybody not going to make it in. Because people got a choice. They can choose you or the devil. Choose to sin over God. God. So God, today we pray for our families and all those around us. Everywhere we go, we'll tell the good news that Jesus is good news to those that are ready. Coming, Jesus coming, coming back is bad news to those that are not ready. We got to get our house in order. You say, watch therefore and pray. Because you don't know the day or the hour when our Lord doth come. Everything predicted in your word, God, concerning Jesus' coming, has already took the, took the, came to pass, God. Everything. You said, but this gospel must be preached to all people. So, God, I'm praying that every human being on the face of the planet, everybody would hear the good news. Hear that Jesus come to save your sin. Hear that Jesus has, came to, so you don't have to go to hell. Because there still is a hell. I know, God, we don't preach hell no more. It's obsolete. It's not politically correct. It's old hat. It's old school. But, God, I pray that you raise up some preachers, some prophets that we get back to know that hell is real. You don't want to go there. I know they say, oh, I'm going to party in hell. I'm going to get my, I'm going to party, get my groove on it. Oh, I beg to differ. Oh, the hell is not a place of partying. It's not a place of having fun. It's not a place to meet your friends and your boys and your road dogs. Hell is real today. I know somebody say, we don't want to talk about hell. Let's talk about grace. I know there's grace. I'm not refusing. You can grace by grace you are saved but there still is hell it's still real out don't you want to know the truth you should know the truth the truth will make you feel make you free hell is still real i know we teach we, we don't want to preach it but hell is still real you don't want to go there you want to avoid that place it's a place of torment uh, hell is a place of, of anguish and crying day and night there's a burning and a quenching smoke that will not be quenched uh, it's a smoke going up 24 7 for smoke uh, your flesh will burn off off and then come back on. Your flesh will burn off some more and it will come back on and you will constantly be in pain and torment. You'll be burning alive with no no, no water, no relief. It won't be no reprieves in, he in hell. You don't want to go there. It is real. It's torment every day, every day. And it's not just for 10 years. It's not just for 20 years. But this thing is eternal. It's eternal damnation. I pray today, God, that the word of the Lord be released all over the planet. Everybody will come to know Jesus to get a chance to escape the pit of hell because it is real. 
But then heaven is real too. Heaven is a place, eternal, eternal salvation with Christ. Oh God, those that are born again, they will see their loved ones all over again. God, we got mansions all over, all over the land, all over heaven. There's gates, there's gates of pearls and diadems. We walking on streets of gold. It's a beautiful place. It's a place of no more tears, no more crying, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more torment, no more fear, no more poverty. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Uh, no more sickness and disease. And most of all, there's no more death. Uh, we're going to live forever. Oh, God, thank you for heaven. Oh, God, thank you those that are prepared. God, you want us to prepare ourselves for your coming. Because uh, come, the coming of the Lord is real. Oh, God, in 2016, uh, we will be mindful. Oh, God, I pray today. I pray the day, God, that everyone that we come in contact, God, as we share their word, we plant that seed in their bosom, in their heart, and they'll say yes to your will and yes to your way, God, because it's real. The gospel is real. The Bible is real. God, you said it's your desire that no man should perish, but all should come to the acknowledgement of the truth. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, as we prayed, as we prayed to have back it, he said, I will stand upon my watch. I will watch to he see what he was saying to me and what I should answer when I am reproved. God, we got to be on, be on our watch this year. I thank you for every intercessor is on their watch right now. God, we, oh, we even got to be the spiritual evangelist. I know everybody is not called to, to be an evangelist. You said, but do the work of an evangelist. You said, do the work of an evangelist. Do the work of one. Go out. We got to win souls. God, I pray the gay today, God, that you would deputize us more and more to be those spiritual, uh, to be those evangelists, God. We might not be called to the fivefold ministry gift to be a quote-unquote evangelist per se, but we all have an anointing as a witness. We all have an anointing to tell the good news. We all have an anointing. There's an anointing. Uh, 2000, I feel it right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, there's an anointing. Uh, there's an anointing being released over the airways. I don't know where they're at, God. Are they listening in Euclid? Are they listening in Cleveland? Is somebody out the state listening today? I bring anybody, everybody that hears this broadcast, uh, even after it's all said and done and you go back on demand and hear it again. Oh, God, every time they turn on, the, put on this show, God, I pray today in the name of Jesus uh, that there will be an anointing, uh, an anointing. There's an anointing coming out, coming, 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 coming out. Uh, release it. Uh, oh, God, I thank you. Put it in me. I thank you for that release. Uh, there's an anointing flowing. There's an anointing uh, on every home, every house. They all need an anointing uh, to be a spiritual evangelist. Uh, go out and tell the good. There's an anointing. Uh, there's a mantle. God, we release the mantle of the internet. We release the mantle of the evangelist, God. We release the prophetic anointing. Oh, God, a little bit of release of the anointing. There's an anointing we release. Receive your anointing. Receive your mantle in the name of Jesus. Pick up that mantle. It's being released right now. I don't know who you are, but somebody's receiving it. Somebody's saying, yes, Lord. I receive your anointing. Yes, Lord. I receive that power. Because you need power today. You can't go out and do this work on your own. My Bible tells me in Acts 1 and 8, ye shall receive power. Power. Come on, somebody. You receive power. Hard oh, to be witnesses. You be witnesses unto me. The Holy Ghost said, in Jerusalem and Judea, in the uttermost parts of the world, you be witness. You have the power. So you need some power today. Don't think you're going out on your own talking about Jesus without no power. The devil will eat you up. You need power today. I, 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 I admonish you to get in your word and get some power. I admonish you to get on your knees and get some power in this month of January. Where everybody's fasting and praying, you need to get on and ask for an new anointing. I read that it was released, but you gotta catch that anointing. You can't catch, you can't carry the oil if your spirit is not ready. Remember, the Bible says that he soaked those wine skins in oil. In, in, in oil. The wine skins were soaked before they could receive the oil. They had to soak the, soak those wine skins in water before the oil was poured in. So you gotta soak today. You got to soak, hallelujah, in that anointing. You got to soak in that power. You got to soak in that glory. You got to soak it. Soak yourself. Soak yourself in this Bible. Just soak yourself in this Bible. Soak yourself. Keep reading the word day and night. My Bible says that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. My Bible tells me that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God doth man live. Every word is, is that proceedeth out of the mouth. 
that proceedeth out of the mouth. You see, there's a proceeding word. You can't leave on yesterday's word. There's a proceeding word. It's a new word coming out the spirit of God every day. You can't live off of yesterday's word. You can't live off of last year's word. Oh, you got to have a proceeding word. Proceeding means it's ever coming out. It's never stopping. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You got to get a proceeding word. Quit living off of that stale bread. That's a step. Quit living off of yesterday's word. And last, when I first got saved, God said, God been talking long. He talk every day. But are we listening? He, he God is talking every day. That's a new word every day, every day, every day. He said, this is the day that the Lord hath made. And we are rejoicing and be glad every day. That's a new word. So I'm praying today. We get back in our word. I'm praying. We get back in our word. We said it at Bible. We're starting to show ourselves approved. The work that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly divided word of truth and we will stop and we will pray we will pray in the midnight hour we will pray without ceasing we'll stand upon our watch and pray in the name of Jesus Christ and we'll be those Paul Revere's of the last days they say Jesus is coming Jesus is coming we're ready to go plant that seed Jesus is coming Jesus is coming Jesus is coming on your workplace Jesus tell them Jesus is coming they might laugh at you call it like Noah they might ridicule you to call you stupid old Christian that's all right let it take the persecution Take the persecution. They, they, everybody that live godly shall serve persecution. You might be laughed at and ostracized, but you tell the good news. Because if you don't tell the good news and you know the good news, the Bible tells me in Ezekiel that blood is going to be on your hands. Don't have nobody's blood on your hands. Yes, they'll go to hell, but that their, their blood will be on your hands. Be on my hands. I don't want no blood on my hands. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you. For hearing our prayers today. You said that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man evadeth much. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for hearing us always, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we'll be careful to give you the praise. Now, O oh God, as we have ended the prayer connection today with your sister in Christ, Michelle Rice, we want to always open up the altar. Come on to the altar, bae. It's been a long I'm speaking to somebody. Bae, come on. You done tried everything. Everybody, you don't try all. You don't. You don't try the drugs. That didn't do it. Getting high, getting getting drinking. Men try. You been, You don't try everything. How about trying Jesus? My plea today: If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal savior, if you stuck in a rut and you think you think there's no hope, today God is saying, "Come to <coughs> Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, just as you are. Come on. I know you're tired. Yeah, babe. I know you're tired." Sis, I know you're tired. Yeah, brother, I know you. I know you're tired. Just tired and weary. <coughs> and I'm gonna lead you in a simple prayer for to receive, to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Just repeat after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm a sinner. Go ahead, and repeat it. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I repent. I want to be saved. I realize that I need you. I realize. I will die in my sins if I don't receive you. So, Father, come into my heart. Give me a new life. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Father, you said that if I if I if I if I if any man call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you pray this simple prayer as we close today on this broadcast, simple prayer, you have just received Jesus. He's in there. Do three things. Get in that Bible, pray, and get you into a good church. And serve Jesus and tell somebody else, Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Give God the praise. See you next time. Bye-bye. Love you. Most of all, Christ loves you. Amen. All right, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your words today, Lord. Mm.